happy new day. Can we chat for a bit about my offerings lately on the pressing, the crushing, the ministry of tears, liquid tears, <laughs> the valley of sorrow, those things. Hi, Adrian. Um, I've been sharing a lot about this, and um, and I just wanted to lend some language as to like why, the why behind the what, because um, I think it's really important that we understand, like, you know, the the motivation sometimes. Because as Brene Brown says, that in the absence of data, we develop stories. In the absence of information, we write our own narrative, and um, and we can often assume a lot on one another and the motivations of one's heart and. Um, and I think it's good because as I've been praying this morning, the Lord's like, dude, there's so much misunderstanding in the body of Christ. And like, how are we, how are we supposed to unite and come together and support one another, um, as people of God and as just like decent human beings when we're constantly trying to make assumptions based on someone's motivation on something without even having a dialogue or conversation about it. You know, we're never more like the enemy than when we accuse because the Bible calls him the accuser, the accuser of the brethren. And so when we make assumptions or when we accuse somebody of something without develop or without actual data and information, then, um, then we are operating demonically. Is that crazy? Crazy, crazy, right? So you guys, this ministry of tears and the weeping that I've endured for what seems like all year, and 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 I don't say this to draw attention to myself because I understand like this is not a pity party. This is a glory story. Okay, um, we're all going through our own things, and it's been a very trying and pressing and crushing year. And um, and really, God promises to use all things to work together for our good. For those of us who love him, who are called according to his purpose. So even in the pressing, even in the crushing, even in the like crazy circumstances of life, like we could seek and find God's hand, sovereign hand through all of it. And we could find his comfort and his peace too. So I don't know about you, but like, I like to be the lion, you know, I'm more lion-like than I am lamb-like most of the time. I'm this fierce, fiery, ferocious, ferroni. You know, I'm bold and courageous. I like to, you know, get my sword and slice through the lies of the enemy and speak with boldness and passion. And and when I'm feeling weak and when I'm feeling wounded, when I'm feeling weary and when I'm feeling downtrodden, when I'm feeling like I'm going through heartache and confusion and all of these things, like I hate that feeling, you know? Like it seems so counterproductive or counterintuitive how I operate and like how I'm made and, and I begin to think is this an assault to my identity and who God created me to be like this is not who I am you know to be sad and crying all the time and I don't know about you but like it, it feels good to be feel strong and it sucks when when we don't feel all that strong and I think our own strength sometimes can be an idol in our life because our strength has to come from the Lord. It can't come from our own might. It can't come from our own intellect. It can't come from our own experience. You know, it's like look within and you can find your own strength. Actually, on your own, you are just a body. You're a carcass. You are a casing. You're the housing of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you might be breathing, but you are dead straight dead not alive when you are born again and made new his pneuma his breath comes upon you and fills you with his spirit and then we become new creations and it's then his strength through us it's his blood transfusion in our veins it's his heaven dna written in our code you know because without that we might be breathing we might be walking talking but we are like dead people we are we are there's a lot of dead christians sorry Ooh, holy spirit do, do help okay so the ministry of weeping and stuff you guys I thought something was wrong with me for a while, you know, and in, in, in the natural, if we look at it just from a carnal perspective, we might say like, oh, you need to go see a therapist and like, you might need medication, you know, because we just want to, we want to get out of the season of grief. We want to get out of the, of the season of mourning. We want to, we want to move past 
those things quickly. We, we don't want to be in the valley of sorrow, as the Bible tells us in Psalm 68. We, we don't want to be in that place. We don't want to be in that place. We want to be strong. We want to be victorious. We want to be bold and courageous. And we are those things, but what if it's and and both and not either or? Why in our carnal minds do we see everything so binary? That if you're weeping, you must not have faith. That is an assault against those with faith. And you know what? I've had it because as I've been going through this, all of these attacks on my mind, even growing, you know, growing in the church in these last few years and being deeply invested in ministry and different organizations and stuff that like there was no weeping. There was no teaching of weeping. There was no lessons on going through seasons of grief. I had a friend of mine in, in the previous church who had her boyfriend shot and killed in front of her dead. Went into the church and was like, hey, so I know I'm smiling, but like, I'm not doing okay. And like, I could really use some pastoral care. And they were like, oh, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, like call the office and uh, we might be able to give you a referral to counselor. She's like, no, like, there's, like, I'm, I can't, like, you just don't even want to talk to me. Like, we, you just won't just be even available to me. I mean, like, I'm here, I'm serving. They were calling her all the time, asking her to lead teams and lead this and lead that and the, and the welcome team and everything else. But, and I, and I say that not just through hearsay, I say that through even my own experience when the pastor, one of the pastors told me, yeah, like, we're just not set up for pastoral care. That's just, we don't have a model for that. What do you mean you don't, you don't have a model for pastoral care? Like, this is a global church with multiple locations and a whole lot of people on staff. What do you mean you don't have a model for pastoral care? Like... Thank you for your honesty, but now I know, you know, and once you, once you know, you can't unknow. And so that was one of many things that I was like, this is, <laughs> this is not a kingdom focused church, okay? Ministry of weeping. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that from the platforms. I, there wasn't pastoral care model, whatever that means. Um, you know, worship, you know, it was like, yeah, we're all here. Like we jump jump like we, we are the jumping worshipers like we jump we jump we jump for joy the altar cute but like weeping no we don't we don't I mean we're not gonna tell you not to do it but like don't do it jumping thumbs up on the ground like laid out in the spirit can you not can you not weeping. There's no teaching the weeping. <laughs> no, because in, in corporate Christianity where things are about appearances, where there's style guides for what you should wear when you're on the worship team, and there's seating assignments based on representing those that are um, of different ages and ethnicities obviously to give the appearance on the television that they're a diverse church it's you know that's all that's all coordinated in a lot of places a lot of places and i don't say that for shame i just say that to say that there's cherry pick things and things that they have high value for and other things in the bible and part of the christian journey that there is zero value for and that is a disservice to the body of Christ. That is dishonorable to the heart of Jesus. Um, and I and I'm just the Lord is just showing me more and more and more and more. And He's shown me, and I've kept it private, and I've kept it quiet, and I've written it down, and it's in my journals, and and I and I pastor people one on one through these things, but. And these are not conversations I love to have, you know, this disclosures, uh, because again, you know, just that whole stupid fear of man thing that's like, oh, you're just going to rattle some feathers and offend some hearts. Well, you know what? Jesus came to, Jesus came often to 
offend the mind to expose the issues of the heart. And, you know, for those of us that have a lot of value in our experience to share in ways that can minister to others and, and glorify God and, and lend language and, and into things that are just so unspoken, you know, like that's not helpful. That's not helpful to the people who are going through it and are thinking that they're the only ones and don't know where to go to share and process and pray through these things and get healing and get deliverance and get freedom and get under leadership with counsel, wise counsel. There's wisdom in the multitude of counsel. They just don't know where to go. And, and I just remember those seasons of agonizing, just agony, man, going through these things, feeling super alone, not knowing who to trust, not knowing who to talk to, being unfollowed, being ostracized, being thrown out, you know. I mean, God was, do it was all God doing a new thing in me and the pressing and the crushing. And this is a message for another time too, but in the pressing and crushing, new wine was being developed in me. And I'd often go visit those places, you know, um, for worship nights and things like that. And people would look at me so differently. And it was like, and it, and it made total sense in the moment. And it, again, there's no judgment or like, I have no like hard feelings toward anybody. I'm just sharing my experience. But like, they would look at me like, we want the old wine. Like, I don't know what this new wine is, but like, I don't like it. Like, I like the old wine. Like, I like, I like that wine. And I'm like, that wine's gone, dude. Like, that wine is gone. That, that, that grape juice is gone. This is, this is anointing. This is, this is a new wine that needs new wine skin. And you might be going through that right now where you're being pressed and crushed. And, and the Lord's producing new wine in you. And, and you keep trying to go back into the same areas and places and among the same people that you've been doing life alongside for so long. And it's just, it's just like they they're just rejecting it. They're just rejecting you. It feels like rejection because they're like, uh, we just want the old wine. And you're like, I, I, I can't, like, I can't unknow what I know. I can't unsee what I've seen. I can't unhear what I feel like the Holy Spirit has been revealing to my heart. You know, if that's you, like trust, please just hold on and trust and believe that God is bringing you through this process. He'll bring you to, he's bringing you through it and he'll bring you to new places among new people. And, and, and they'll be able to minister to you and, and welcome that new wine. And they'll be able to, um, they'll be able to hold what you carry. You know, um, this is so normal guys. Like this is so, so normal. It's biblically normal. It's, it's, part of the faith journey it's part of trusting God it's part of maturity and sanctification and consecration as he teaches us things and reveals things to us like this is so normal so normal any like major kingdom advancer and and builder that you know of and that you admire and that you see the you know the people that are writing the books that you're reading the people that are going through you know uh, speaking at conferences that you attend like do you understand that they've been through these seasons too like they've they've had they've grown and matured and, and they've been pressed and crushed and they've had new affiliations and associations and replanting and new you know like it's they don't always share it, but like, it's just part of the journey. Okay. And it's not about dishonoring anyone. It's not about any of that. It's just like understanding and like being discerning and understanding what God's doing in your life and, and how to follow him and how to walk this out with him and, and just trust, you know, like some people are at different levels of revelation and understanding. Some people are very, very bound. And, and even the ones that claim to be anti-religious have also become religious in their anti-religiousness. That'll preach. It's just, it's just what it is. Um, but you just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. You know, just don't, don't get discouraged because of you know, humanity, where there's people, there's going to be problems, where there's flesh, there's flaws, like, it's just, it's just normal, it's just what it is, let's just keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, keep pressing forward, you know, like, release what you got to release, and cleave to what you need to cleave to, and come on, just keep walking, keep walking, I just, I just want to pastor your heart today, I just, Heather's pastor hat is on, and I hope I'm, I'm just speaking to somebody, and lifting you up, okay? this weeping. 
I know you're not hearing a lot about it. It feels awkward when other people are. I know, because as I've been going through it and processing through it, I'm like, Lord, from a carnal perspective, like, is, am I broken? Is there something broken in me? Is my brain broken? Is it what I'm eating or what I'm drinking? Is there something I need to do differently? Like, I just, this this valley of weeping is so intense. And, and like, how much longer do I got to go through it, you know? I mean, have you ever driven through Texas? Anyone driven through Texas before? I have not. <laughs> I have not driven through Texas. Um, but anyone I know that has driven through Texas is like, that is the longest drive ever. Like, still just driving through Texas, you know? Sometimes driving through the valley of sorrow feels like maybe what driving through Texas is like. Like, oh my gosh, this is so long. Like, can I get a change of scenery? Like, can I get out of this state? Like, can I just, can I, can I experience a new atmosphere, <laughs> you know? But what I'm learning in this and what the Lord is showing me is that it's temporary, that it's not punishment, that it's actually promotion, that it's an invitation. He's inviting me in and I'm going to come out of this and I, and I, I have joy in it. <laughs> you know, like, do you understand that grief and hope can coincide? Like they can like be together. Um, that you can be sobbing and also laughing. I mean, I just like, it has been the most wild journey of like, there's times where I'm just so pouring out and I'm just praying so intensely, streaming, sobbing, you know, and also like, like laughing to God. And it's like this, I don't know if I'm sobbing or laughing because it's just, it's all just coming out. I've been driving through the valley 2020. Brenda, you are not alone, girl. You are not alone. You are driving through. You are not camping out. There's a difference between camping out, setting up tent, and just passing through. If you're on struggle bus, well, you, you don't live on a bus. Like, you're just passing through. And it's not punishment. Instead of seeing it as punishment, start seeing it as promotion. Start start seeing that God is, is inviting you into deeper levels of intimacy and he's tenderizing your heart in a way that's just so beautiful that you may not have gotten to had it not been through the, the loss or the agony or the grief or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Well, there's, a, I don't know that I could say that. Like, no, this tenderization and the things I'm learning and the, and the ways that I'm growing and in humility and dependency on the Lord through this, like I actually do wish this upon people because it's Him. I give no, I give no credit to the enemy, even if the enemy has he's the overplaying his hand. He don't know who he's messing with. And as you, whoever is listening, like you need to remind the enemy that, you know what, if this is your hand at play, let me just remind you who you're messing with. I'm more than a conqueror and I have the authority to crush you underneath my heel. And as you feel like you're being crushed, you actually are the crusher. Yeah. And I'm so sorry that, Lord, I'm so sorry. Jesus. <sighs> that you have not had enough Christian leaders who are willing to be honest and authentic and vulnerable. I'm so sorry that you have been duped by people on platforms and their polished eagerness for perfectionism and appearance and the perception that you admire them keep things light keep it keep it light pray 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 and be light just be light just pray lightly I'm so sorry I'm so sorry for those deceptive spirits I'm so sorry I'm so sorry you've been under that but you can get out from under it you can rise victorious you can rise victorious you are given permission to 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 to, to go through this moment of pressing and to, to experience God's glory through your pain. And you don't need to be placated. 
And you don't need to be assaulted by people who want to inadvertently or even even purposely keep it light, make you feel like your weeping is, is somehow an indicator of your lack of faith. That is BS. Sorry, there's no other way to put it. It's bull. Bull. You can cry. Jesus wept. Genesis Landscape Solutions. I love driving by things that just remind me of God's goodness. Jesus wept. You can weep. He can weep with you. You know what? Oh, okay. In closing, before I go, I um, was on the phone with a friend last night. A friend, the intercessor, had been um, reached out to me with one of those 911 calling for backup. Hey, girl, like, I'm going in for it, but I could use your prayers too. And I called her, and we were on the phone. You know, and how many moms know sometimes, I'm not a mom, but I do it too. <laughs> or you just go for a drive and sit in a parking lot. Put your head on your steering wheel and weep. It was one of those moments. And I got to be there with her on the phone through it. And, um, and as I'm praying and as, you know, she's venting and we're praying and, and I'm asking, I'm hearing her, but I'm listening for the Lord. And I felt like the Lord tell me, told me to tell her, Hey, you've been asking and someone needs to hear this today. You've been asking the Lord to take away the weeping. You've been asking the Lord, like, Lord, I just don't want to agonize through this anymore. Lord, deliver me through this pain. And I don't want to be in the valley of weeping anymore. And Lord, just, you know, I just help me to be strong again. And the Lord told me to tell her, and I'm telling you, because it might be for you too, that sometimes we ask the Lord to do those things when his response to us is you're feeling my heart on the matter and I'm weeping too. I'm weeping with you. I am more hurt about the situation or the violation or the situation, the circumstance, the loss, the grief, the addiction, the separation, the affair, the law, the business loss, job loss, home loss, um, death, disease, decay, depression, whatever. Like the Lord weeps even more. He's He's agonizing even more. And so when we're asking him to take it away, he's just like, you're feeling my heart on it though. I don't know how to take it away from you when I'm with you in it. And I'm feeling with you in it. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Sometimes we might be weeping with him through it. And he's like, you want to, you want to curse your humanity through this. You want to just be bulletproof. You just want to be happy, clappy, like all the people that you see up on their platforms that make it look so easy. Like they've never had a bad day. Like they've never had a, a grieving season. It's deception. It is deception. And it's happening in the church. And he's weeping over that. The Lord is, is grieved by that, you guys. But as we're given this awakening, as we're given this wisdom revelation, as we're given this new level of understanding through his perspective, through heaven's perspective, he's going to be our comforter. He's going to be our counselor. He's going to heal us. He's going to restore us. He's going to give us joy. It's his strength. It's his strength that is our joy. Weeping will last for a night. Sometimes night is a long time. Sometimes the season or the valley of weeping is, is much longer to pass through than we anticipated. It's okay as long as he's with us. Invite him into your weeping. Invite him into everything that you're doing. When Jesus is not just your savior, but your Lord, your Lord, invite him into every moment, every facet, bring it to him. I was weeping so hard last night and I just would reach this new level with the Lord. And I was just like, Lord, how do you feel hearing me weep to you every day? And I just felt his comfort. Like he was saying to me, well, I'm weeping with you. So maybe somebody needs to hear that today. You're asking the Lord, am I moving you to compassion? How do you feel? I'm weeping at you every day. Are you annoyed with me? Are you frustrated? I'm frustrated. 
I don't know how much more I can pour out. And maybe the Lord just wants to speak through my voice to your heart today. And you'll feel it. You'll know if it's for you. When he says, I'm weeping with you. I'm weeping with you. He's so good. We serve a good God. He's a good father. Jesus, our intercessor, he is with us in it. He is not blind, deaf, dumb, on vacation or sleeping. He hears. He is a God who hears and he is a God that heals. Take comfort in that. Do not give up. Do not give up in doing good. And sometimes the good that you're doing is just being in his presence and weeping at his feet. You don't think that feels good. It's not about feeling good. It's about what is good. And that's good for you to weep at his feet. It's good for you to go into a deeper level of worship and intimacy with him. That is good. It doesn't have to feel good to be good. But he's with you. And God is good. And he, he just will honor that sacrifice. He'll honor that sacrifice. That sacrifice of praise, that offering of tears, he's going to honor that. You can believe that. You're not alone. He promised to never leave you or forsake you. He's with you wherever you go. He is your comforter, your guide, your advocate, your defense attorney. He's going to come to your defense. He's going to right the wrongs, whether on this side of heaven or the next. It doesn't matter. He's going to do what God can do. And he will restore and he will heal and he will bring together and he will separate. Sometimes separating is part of his process as well. Let me bless your day. Okay, this is heavy stuff, but it's good. And it's going to speak to some people. If it's not for you now, it might be for you later. So save this message, will you? Or maybe you've been pastoring and counseling other people through their season of weeping. Maybe you can send this video over to them. Okay? This, I'm depending on, on you guys and the Holy Spirit to, uh, to send, the, send forth these messages because this platform here is very much against um, my counsel and my offerings because of their censorship. So, do with that what you feel prompted to do. Father, I just thank you. We thank you. We, we turn our attention. We turn our eyes to you, Jesus. We look up to the hills. We know that's where our help comes from. And I'm praying on behalf of every single sister and brother under the sound of my voice that's listening now or later, Lord. And I am believing and I am decreeing. I'm declaring and I'm thanking you for being the comforter, Holy Spirit. Comfort them as they journey through the valley of weeping. Help them see the beauty in their gift of tears. Help them uh, feel super confident knowing that you're counting their tears, you're bottling them up and that their sacrifice of, of blessing and their willingness to go through the pressing and the crushing of the circumstances of their life, that you're with them in it and through it. And that it is not a, a punishment, Lord, but that it is a promotion. And you are producing a new thing out of them, new oil and new wine for their good and your glory, God. And I thank you that they are more than conquerors and overcomers. And you'll see them to these things and through these things so that they will be overcomers, more than conquerors, and they'll be able to minister. You're, you're giving them an access pass to be able to minister to others who uh, in the future will be going through what they're going through Lord and they will be able to speak with a voice of authority as as conquerors and overcomers to minister to your people Lord thank you Jesus for what you're doing thank you Jesus for overturning poor decisions thank you for exposing corruption in and out of your church thank you for your cleansing who knew that sometimes the cleansing is through the washing of the tears? <laughs> Jesus, we know you wept and we know you're weeping. And instead of praying us out of it, Lord, we just want to learn to be accepting of where you have us now and what you're doing in us now. And it may not look like what we thought it would look like. It may not feel the best, Lord. But we know that your plans for us are good and not to harm us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. And we know that you're with us in every situation, in every circumstance. And Lord, we repent from the moments where we've left you out and tried to deal with things on our own. Lord, we repent. 
We repent from that. We confess we cannot do it on our own. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. Guide us and comfort us in all that we do and all everywhere that we go, Lord. Send us in to the places and the spaces, the highways, the byways, the valleys. Send us in as sheep among wolves. We are not afraid in Jesus' name. Do in us first what you would have us do, do, do through us. Does that make sense? Do in us what we need, that needs to be done so that you can do through us what you need us to do. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Fill them with your spirit, God. Fill them with your spirit, your tenderness, your ferociousness. Speak to someone's heart and let them know they don't have to. Uh, keep it light. Keep it light, friend. Keep it light. Pray lightly. Pray light. No. We pray the light of your glory shine in every dark place of our, every crack and crevice of our heart and of our culture and of our world, Lord. That's the light we pray. We pray the, the light of your fire, the light of your anointing. Not keep it light, keep it light, just light. No, we pray your boldness, your light, your fire, your blazing fire. That fire burn off the junk, burn off the crap and the chaff. Burn off the compromise and corruption, even amongst the leaders that are on platforms, Lord. Burn it. Purify them. Make them radiant. Make us radiant. Make us all radiant, ready, cleansed, purified, beautiful, unified. Corruption must go. In Jesus' name, we pray. We take all judgment any offense Lord we put that down at your feet we know that has no place in our mind no place in our heart Lord so I speak on behalf of a person who has overcome those things over anyone else who's going through those things you put that down at Jesus's feet I know you see the corruption I know you see the compromise I know you're being awakened you're seeing things through heaven's perspective it is shocking you're like oh I wish I didn't see that ignorance was so much more blissful but no he's entrusting you to see it and, and, and he's given you access then to pray into it, not to live in judgment, to pray over the people and the leaders and just pray over their heart, pray the will of God over their heart, that they come into repentance, that they, they let those things go, the, the perception of perfection and, and all that junk, and that they turn, they turn towards the Lord and they lead with wisdom and they lead in the fullness of the sharing of the gospel they teach the fullness of his word, not just the happy clappy parts, but the fullness of it. And it's hard to teach what you don't experience. It's hard to teach what you have no context for. So he's bringing us to and through these things so that we can have context and compassion, not judgment. So if you're going through the valley of weeping, you are a pilgrim into this, this new land of promise and provision and protection that he's bringing us all into. You're a pilgrim. That is the word of God found in Psalm 68, I believe. Go look it up for yourself and be encouraged today. In Jesus' name.